today we have with us Mr. Abhishek Ranjan, who is the Director of Sustainability at Drillio Global and is associated through the Leadership and Communications Program. So, welcome Abhishek. Thank you, Bhagishri. It's my pleasure. Uh, my first question to you is, um, being a highly recognized CSR professional and a leader, uh, what's your take on the CSR ecosystem in India and the way it's evolving? Yeah, so it's a great time to be in CSR in the last five years, you know, has been very, very, um, very, very comforting. And also, you know, the seeing the kind of attraction CSR has got in India has been amazing. I come from a marketing background and, you know, venture into CSR probably the same year when the law was, you know, enacted in India. Today, CSR has reached to the boardrooms and, you know, and thanks to the law, you know, that has been a, uh, one of the great moves where, you know, the board of directors of the companies are actually feeling the presence of CSR in their board meetings and discussion. And that has given a very, very good, you know, um, focus for CSR when the top leadership of the organizations are actually making decisions for community good and for the corporate social responsibility. Now, while CSR has reached to, broad, uh, to the board boardroom, it has also seen the convergence of profit and non-profit sector. Today, you see a lot of people, you know, from profit and non-profit are actually either, you know, taking some break, joining here, and, you know, so there's a lot of convergence of ideas, convergence of mind, and I think finally CSR has come to a place where purpose is the key from philanthropy projects and, and henceforth. So I see a great and a very bright future where both the profit world and the non-profit world and the community at large conversing for a greater social good. So moving ahead, uh, could you tell us about Brillio's flagship CSR projects and how you're leveraging Brillio's technological expertise through these projects? So Brillio is a global uh, digital uh, technology firm. And um, since our inception, you know, this company started uh, five and a half years back. And uh, CSR was never an afterthought. That, hey, we will make profits, we'll make um, good revenues, and then we will start the CSR. CSR was embedded in the culture, the DNA, or how we call it here. It's a more of a solo for organization. And what we have seen that, you know, building CSR and sustainability as a cultural agenda and integrating with our entire philosophy how the company runs, has given a tremendous value for the company in all, all spheres of wherever you want to evaluate. Now, if you look at um, when we saw, you know, what, what is our strength? So we have, you know, 2000 plus, you know, you know, tech, uh, you know, tech employees working for a company on some of the, some of the very advanced technologies, be it cloud, be it, you know, data analytics and, and so forth. Now these employees comes with a lot of passion, a lot of skills, and we thought, how do we integrate and create a program where all our stakeholders, be it our employee, be it our community partners, the community itself, you know, they all become a stakeholder and partner. So we firmly believe from the beginning that if you want to do a social good and, and create a very, very high impact program, it has to be a partnership model. We looked at education um, as a focus area to start with and environment and others got added. When you look at education, you know, the 20th century, the jobs and the skill requirement is going to be largely around STEM, or we can now call it STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths, right? Now, if you look at, you know, the future jobs is going to be there. And what we see is that the divide between haves and have not and children who cannot probably afford uh, a, a, you know better schooling or schools equipped with all this infra and the kind of learning you know they need the divide is going to widen and then you know when they grow up and they look for the career or they want to do it their own they will have a lot of issues so we realized this at a very early stage and we focused our program on stem and that's how we we have been able to help more than 40,000 children by now in 150 schools across multiple states in the country and elsewhere outside the country as well. As we all know, reaching the last mile in education is certainly a very difficult task for most of the companies. 
So given this backdrop, how do you strategize engagements with different partners, be it implementing agencies or policy makers, NGOs? How do you ensure that these partnerships happen and come together? So as I was mentioning earlier, you know, I come from business. You know, I have seen, you know, worked in marketing, sales and other organizations of various tech companies. For me, um, CSR is a very, very, uh, you know, agenda, which is, and the CSR function has to run like a business. When I say business, not making profit, but probably using every other formulas available to create the impact, right? So there's a very, um, you know, people in the technology sector, they will know about this, uh, you know, BOT. When we say BOT, it's a build, operate, transfer. Most of the CSR projects we do, we not only build it, whether it's infra, whether it's a supporting any kind of support school needs, but we are there to handle, we are there to operate, and we transfer to them when we feel that, that this, this can be self-sustained. So build, operate, transfer model has been a, a prime lever for us to kind of be successful. Obviously, we couldn't learn this art in the first few years, but as we have progressed over the years, we felt that it's very important for us to be there, you know, you know, in a journey of learning. And as you know, the education sector is not like, you know, you can see the impact so fast. It takes time, it takes years, sometimes many, many years. So the most important thing is believing your partners, whether it's a community partners, your school teachers, children, the parents, you know, the education officers from the government, if you can involve all of the stakeholders and if you make them believe that, hey, we are not here to just do some project, but actually we do some meaningful project for a long-term project, which will create an impact and make them partner in service, partner in your community programs. That is really something, you know, we have learned and I think that has been a phenomenal journey for us in terms of the kind of impact we have created. Given the current situation unfolding around COVID-19 and the emphasis on creation of local employment opportunities and skill development for underprivileged and differently abled as well, um, what challenges do you foresee for its implementation and how do you envision the new normal scenario? So COVID-19 is a very unprecedented times and I think this is a very testing time for CSR as well. You know, it, it kind of shaken us uh, for sure, and you know, but um, I think you know when the you know when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and and we could actually you know um, you know within the first few weeks uh, we could start our program, and we started with you know providing meals to you know hundreds of families uh, across India with our partner in Joe Networks. Well, it was very difficult for us to kind of, you know, move to a total digital because, you know, most of the time we work in a hybrid situation. So while we have, you know, physical classes going on the school, we have, uh, you know, but, you know, it was very difficult for us to kind of, because, you know, we don't know how, how there's no communication network for the end students. There were no, no way we can reach out to the parents, right? So we started with kind of building those synergies, those groups, where we can have a parent teachers groups in the government schools. And, you know, today, when I look back in the last two or three months, every single day we are in a position to help children, every single day. Every Monday to Friday, we have classes happening. There are academic classes, there are fun classes. There is a, you know, we, every summer vacation, we used to do summer camps, right? And um, we didn't want our children to miss that this, this time as well. So we said, you know, let's do a digital summer camp. Right, um, and I'm amazed to see the participations. Every week they work on a different themes. You know, children are you know receptive. We recently you know started a program of training teachers on digital literacy, and uh, when we when we asked for sign up, we got like thousands of teachers signing up for that. We have everyday classes happening on digital literacy. So I think you know. Uh, as I said, as quoted earlier, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I think that's what happening. And I, I see that we are more busier than you know the normal times. So yes, there is there's a challenge of of you know availability of computing devices. There's a challenge of 
probably electricity, there would be a challenge of uh, internet connectivity, but that's a cost for, for many people, it's a quite a huge cost. These are the challenges, yes it is, but um, what I, what I may see that, you know, that the kind of enthusiasm and the support, it's possible. And there could be many other ways, you know, uh, I, I was reading about and hearing that, you know, many state governments have started using television, the cable network, the televisions as a network for, to provide teaching and skilling, right? Um, could be as simple as SMS-based education, or could be a recorded video can be sent and, you know, parents can teach when they want, right? So I think, yes, there are, there are going to be a, a lot of challenges in the digital infrastructure side, but yeah, every challenge has a possibility and an opportunity. Vrilio has an extensive employee volunteering program as well. And the way you're adapting your other programs, um, how are you trying to recalibrate this program and ensure its continuity while people are working remotely? So Brilio's volunteering program is very integrated to our community giving um, you know, non-profit partnerships what we have. So every single community outreach we do everything is integrated model. Uh, we believe that, you know, the amount of skills, amount of expertise we have within the organization is actually doubles up or maybe multiplies multifold in terms of the impact. You hold uh, teaching appointments at several premier institutes across India, and you're already involved in training CSR professionals, innovators, or uh, students from social development space. So. Uh, what is your message for these people venturing in social development area? So, as I mentioned earlier at Bhagishri, you know, um, the convergence of profit and non-profit world is going to be a game changer uh, in, in, in the societal's need and the way world is actually seeing the, the kind of uh, challenges it, it's facing and how the community at large can be benefited. It's very, very important that development sector in general, which comprises of CSR, sustainability professionals, nonprofits, government agencies, the UN, all of them would need people from diverse backgrounds. We need thinkers, we need researchers, we probably need innovators, we need you know technologists, digital experts to kind of help and you know design the future programs of you know what is needed for this world and the environment i see four things going to drive the agenda the first is going to be the digital adoption the digital innovation you know how do we make more people digitally you know accessible digitally um, connected so that's going to be a big idea and you need all kind of people, you need a management guy, you need a technologist, you need, you know, all varied people, people who understand the social sector and et cetera. Your second thing is what I see is that sustainability is going to be in future a bigger agenda than what today it is. And CSR and so all other, you know, related aspects is going to be actually integrating to sustainability as a big agenda. So you need people who understand renewable who understand alternate energy sources. You need experts in those areas as well, right? The third piece which I see is where we need a lot of people is going to be social entrepreneurship, right? And when you say social entrepreneurship, you need the same business acumen. You need the same skill set, what you need to run probably corporations and profit sectors, right? And Social entrepreneurship is some message between profit and between the profit and the non-profit, right? And the fourth piece, which I see that, you know, we need models for impact. We need newer ideas, newer, you know, models, how the impact actually gonna be measuring. How are you gonna, you know, create those models of impact? Maybe something like, you know, impact investment, right? Now all, and you need probably a brains from the finance, you need brains from, from analytics for matter, right? You need all of these people in the sector in large. So it's, it's very important that the, the uh, you know, the people from across sectors join and make it happen. Coming to my teaching in the business schools, um, 
I've been teaching at IMT Gajiaba, Nasimanji, and Christ University on a regular basis. I see a huge, you know, acceptance among the B school graduates uh, for sustainability and social responsibility. It's a very, very um, happy to see that, you know, that B schools are actually making it a part of their curriculum and as well as the inter internship, social internships, and all of that, right? We never had this opportunity when maybe decades back, right? Uh, I remember studying at IMT Gajabad and all we could do in, in terms of social outreach was probably organizing a blood donation camp or doing probably a Diwali gifting to people who need, right? But I think things have evolved a lot over the years, right? So I see that you know, there is a lot of acceptance and also the development sector, the non-profit sector is actually willing to accept this, that hey, we need MBAs, we need you know, people with technology skills, people with engineering background, people with architecture, people with other professions as well, right? So I think the acceptability and the convergence of profit and non-profit and they coming closer is making a great deal of, you know, uh, you know, great deal. And actually it's making uh, a great sense of belief that together we can make this world a much, much better place. Thank you, Mr. Abhishek, for taking out time and being a part of our interview series. We have got some really great insights and we look forward to further collaborations. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. It was really a pleasure talking to you.